Hi there, my name's Toby Fountain. I'm the warden for Cowton Marsh, which we're stood in now. This is a rare example of wet woodland. It's about a mile and a half to two miles outside of ross on -Wye. Um, it's an unusual habitat because, as you can see, it's a mixture of kind of bog vegetation and marsh vegetation amongst um, alder woodland and also some ancient oak and ash woodland. Um, and the reason why it's so wet is because it follows the, it, it's on the site of the old path of the River Wye, um, which used to run here, th through here several thousand years ago. Um, so we have a very high water table here, which you can still see with the presence of all this wet vegetation. Um, it's managed as a coppice woodland um, and one of the main reasons why we do that is for the benefit of dormice, which is probably one of the most significant species we have here. Um, in terms of the birds that we have here, we have tawny owls nesting here, um, black cap, willow warbler, uh, garden warbler are just some of the many warblers you find here, uh, great spotted woodpecker, nuthatch, um, and it's also a good site for amphibians, um, common toad, common frog, smooth newt, all kind of shelter here. Um, grass snakes have been seen here before. Um, and it's got quite an unusual community of flora, as you can see. I mean, this part of the reserve we're in here is like the central clearing. And you can see it's a, mainly a mixture of yellow flag iris and meadow sweet. Um, and if you'd come here about a month ago, you would have seen all the lovely yellow flag flowers. And now we've got the cotton tough flowers of the meadow sweet, which is a very valuable um, pollinator plant. Um, probably the most unusual plant that we have here is a plant called Herparis, which we'll take a closer look at shortly. Um, and it's a quite a rare wet woodland specialist and it has a very unusual appearance. It's a kind of star of leaves with a large berry coming up in the middle. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. So this unusual plant you can see here is probably the scarcest plant that we have on the site and it's called Herb Paris. And it's a very specialized plant that likes to grow in dark, damp places. So it's a specialist of wet woodland and it's nationally scarce. And you can see its anatomy is pretty strange. You, you have this long stalk coming up from the base and then you have this star of leaves. Um, and usually they only have four leaves, but this one strangely has five, which is nice to see. And then it has one large flower coming out the middle of the leaves with a large berry. And apparently the berry is very poisonous. And I also think that the plant itself is poisonous as well because it's always left alone by deer. Um, and if you look behind me, there's quite a lot of other plants growing here. So it's been a particularly good year for them. I think that that might have been to do with the wet, or, uh, the wet weather that we had in the winter. It may have benefited them because the reserve was very wet all the way up until the spring. So it's good to see this rare plant doing well here. So now we're at the second site that I warden. This is Parish Fields, and it's literally a few hundred metres from Cowton Marsh where we were before. And they actually are both remnants of the same large wetland that used to be here, which was known as Cowton Marsh, um, which was once one of the largest wetlands in Herefordshire. And if you speak to local people who lived here um, before it was drained in the 1960s, um, it was home to all kinds of wetland wildlife. There used to be curlew and lapwing breeding here, uh, but the, sadly they disappeared after the wetland was drained. And the two reserves are like remnants of that much larger uh, habitat that used to exist. And Parishfield is quite different to Cowton Marsh. It has, similar, has a similar floral community, kind of wet meadow and wet woodland flora, um, but it's more of a grassland. And as you can see, it's once again dominated by meadowsweet and yellow flag iris. But we've also got some grassland plants like uh, common knapweed and we've got marsh thistle. And we've also got a good array of orchids in here. Um, probably most notably a southern marsh orchid, which as the name suggests, prefers the wet soil that you get here. A fragrant orchid and common spotted orchid. Um, and we'll take a closer look at those. Um, in terms of the birds that we get here, it's good for warblers. There's um, garden warbler, black cap, um, willow warbler all breed in the kind of 
willow rim running around the edge of the meadow and as you can see the meadow sweet is a really valuable pollinator plant we've currently got all sorts of butterflies uh, small white green veined white ringlet meadow brown comma are all feeding and we've got lots of dragonflies um, another thing worth mentioning is that in between the two reserves we've got uh, three reservoirs that were built about 10 years ago and they have regenerated a lot of the, the uh, wetland wildlife that would have been here before the wetland was drained. So um, lots of amphibians breed in the lake uh, like toads, frogs and smooth newts and they shelter in here after they've left the water. Um, so now we'll take a closer look at those orchids that I was talking about. So here's one of our last orchids left this year. Um, if you'd come here about a month ago you would have seen a large bed of southern marsh orchid and fragrant orchid which prefer the wet ground here and they're very large orchids they can grow really impressively tall this is common spotted orchid which is probably the most common orchid that you'll see in the uk um, and in here we also get a white variant uh, which often confuses people it looks exactly the same as this except much paler almost white but it is in fact just the same species but a different genetic variation um, and you can also see here we're in a big bed of uh, common knapweed and meadowsweet and we're surrounded by invertebrates which is very nice to see.